my hair's all fucking weird. What's up, people? Humble Among here. I am a silly individual, a rap advocate, a comic book enthusiast, a wrestling mark, and your general purveyor of weirdness. Coming through with another episode, the second episode, I'm going to call this one The Sophomore Slump, because, you know, second episode and all. Got some stuff I want to talk to you guys about. Um, Yeah. So, this week, let's talk about the new song that I put out. I put out a new song called The Wind this week. Um, It's kind of about the stuff that's been going on lately and my thoughts on it. Uh, It's produced by Then What, uh, who does a lot of my beats, uh, and is probably going to be the first single from Fear of a Whack Planet, my project that is, um, yeah, kind of like the sad, I guess the sad political statement about this planet that I want to make. And The Wind is the first single from that, so go check that out. That's on all streaming services, uh, your Spotify's, your iTunes, your SoundCloud, all, all of that all of that kind of stuff. I think it's on YouTube now. I, I'm not 100%, but probably it is on YouTube now. But yeah, check that out. I'm um, very, uh, very proud of the dark and funny shit that I said on that, so that's, that's, uh, that's fun. That's interesting. That's, yeah, I don't know if it's interesting, but I think it's interesting. Um... Also, this week, I found um, old CDs. Um, I was going through the basement, trying to reorganize stuff with all the home improvement stuff that we're doing around the house, and I found a bunch of old mixtapes. Specifically, I found a box that contained a lot of old copies of my uh, my mixtape, uh, More Songs For You, which is a collection of songs that I was working on um, around 2006 to 2009. Um, I... I I put them together rather um, fast at the time. I think it was dropped in 2009, 2010. And I put them together very fast at the time because I just wanted to be done with those songs and move on to some more silly shit. Now, after um, I was finished with that phase of my sound, I, there's a very long run of mixtapes where I'm doing and saying very silly things. Um, that starts with... Tales from a, uh, what is it? Tales from the 21st Century, I believe, was the first one after that. That has, I don't think, any physical copies. Um, if you have a physical copy of that, um, there's no cover art for that or anything. That's literally a disc that I just burned. I think it was like 24 songs. Um, a lot of it is me rapping over other people's beats at the time. It was when I was kind of stopping writing rhymes really um is is uh that's that's the point where you can really mark where i stopped writing rhymes um so more songs for you is very interesting in the fact that it is the last time i was sitting down and really writing songs like pen to paper so if you want to hear some of that stuff hit me up i got i got a bunch of those copies left um or just order something from the humble among uh bandcamp humbleamong.bandcamp.com Anything you order right now, I'm going to throw in a copy of more songs for you. And if you order more shit, I'll throw in one of the more rare ones. It's getting slim pickings, though, in that box. The other mixtapes are, there's not very many of them. Um, I might have some other ones tucked away in other spots that I might discover. So you might have some more. I might have some copies of Huh? The sequel to What Are You Talking About? Um, I might have some copies of that tucked away somewhere. There might even be some copies of Songs For You, the original one uh, tucked away somewhere, which I really, I want to find the Songs For You master um, because I paid for that to be mastered and I don't know what I did with the master. (laughs) So I have to find that um, so I can, I want to put together a compilation of my old material. So yeah, expect that. That's going to be called uh, Creatures, Features, and Secrets. Um, That's coming soon-ish. I need to contact the uh, cover artist and see what's going on with that um yeah what else do we got here got a bunch of random ish i want to talk to you guys about oh um so there's this whole virus thing going on and i uh i work a day job at a, at a machine factory um we uh 
are considered essential at this point. So we were staying open. And I got word this week that starting next week for two weeks, I'm off. But paid. I'm paid. I'm not laid off. I'm paid off. And I'm going to be paid to stay at home on some just-in-case shit. Because uh, if anyone in the workforce that's still that because they basically just cut the workforce in half right there's an a there's a team and b team um i want to say that they kept the b team um working and they put the a team uh at home that's just my opinion but yeah take that as you will uh i talked a little bit of that on my twitter if you want to go see uh some of my saucy thoughts on that um yeah, so that's uh, that means two weeks off paid for me. Um, I'm gonna do a lot of home improvement around the house. I have some yard work I gotta do. I gotta do some stuff to help my dad. But I'm also gonna do quite a gang of music stuff. So expect some random fucking humble among projects to be starting to drop. Specifically, the Jay Birdface humble among project and possibly the Doxy humble among project coming a lot sooner than you would think. Um, yeah, they literally, I, I'm not going to say a date or anything, but they're just going to drop. We need cover art, though. If you do cover art out there and you do trippy shit specifically, um, and you have, um, a, specifically for the Jay Birdface project, we need something trippy. Um, we're working with the titles Freak Power and or Freaky Friday. If you want to do some trippy stuff for us, please hit me up or hit Jay Birdface up. Um let us know we we need someone to do some artwork um anyway so i've uh this is the this is the uh the age of live streams apparently uh there's been a lot of people live streaming uh, specifically last night i was going through and i was trying to live stream but i'm like man i'm just dividing the audience of people who are already watching much better live streams than anything that i'm doing but i saw some cool live streams um this past week um Saw a lot of live streams this past week, but I want to just real real quick talk about a couple of them. Um, Lyric, um, Vermont hip hop MC Lyric, uh, he did a couple of live streams where he was just kind of freestyling and just kind of playing music and just kind of talking about the kind of style of music that he likes. And it turns out Lyric likes a lot of like psychedelic rock from the 60s and shit. And I found that fascinating. So. Props to Lyric, shout out to Lyric for doing that. I, I thought that was so interesting to just hear the kind of music that you like, dude. That was dope. Um, also, there's Mavstar. Mavstar is doing these dope um, streams uh, where he's playing through Skyrim again. Again, he's, he's acting like he's never played Skyrim, but come on, Mav. No one's buying that shit. We all know you've played that shit a couple of times, homie. Just be, just be for, just stop the front. We know you've been playing that shit. That I've been, I've been really enjoying Mav's streams as well. Um, I got to catch up on a lot more of them. I think he stopped at episode five because he was going to get a better internet connection, uh, or he was waiting on a better inter internet connection. So I have like, I, I'm like halfway through the first one, I think. I was trying to watch him at work, but I ended up being distracted a lot more um, wanting to watch the shit. So, yeah, it was kind of tough to watch at work. Um, but, yeah, shout out to Mavstar. What I've seen so far, that's very entertaining. You should go check that out. Um, he's another Vermont hip-hop MC who's dope as hell. Um, yeah, check out Mavstar and Lyrics Music. They're, they're both very dope Vermont MCs. Um, I caught the tail end of Modest. Um, uh, stream. He had performed some songs, it seemed, um, earlier in the evening, but I missed that part. I caught the end when he was just kind of talking. That was dope. Um, yeah, it's just dope to see some people, you know, do some new creative things, you know? It's it's dope to see that uh, even in this dark time with all this weird shit going on, people are doing cool creative things. So shouts out to everyone doing creative things right now. Also, I saw Puya do a live stream that was very funny to me. He and his girlfriend set up a couple of home depot boxes like a um like a dj setup and just put a damn uh a damn uh bluetooth boom box on the on the boxes for the dj setup and puya had a hairbrush like a microphone and was just performing in this big empty room i i don't know i assume in his house but that was very entertaining that was maybe the best performance live stream i've seen um oh th that's not true shouts out to another vermont hip-hop group uh 99 neighbors i saw i saw a little clip on instagram of um them streaming for some 
pardon me, some some other stream, bands in town. Was it bands in town? Something like that. Um, but that was maybe the best quality stream I've seen so far. So shouts out to bands in town or whoever shot or set up the technical aspect of that stream. That was excellent. They it looked it looked like a music video. It was great. Um, or like a tiny desk concert, but it's a, apparently was a stream. So that was dope. I really enjoyed that. Shouts out to 99 Neighbors. Those dudes are fucking killing it. Vermont hip hop represent. Um, so yeah, that was some of the cool stream shit I saw. Let me get into some Juggalo shit real quick. Blah blah blah. blah. I'm just going through my list. Um, I had I'm you know keeping this list, trying to remember things to talk about. Um, so let's see. First of all, let me talk about ICP. Did um a couple of interviews a few weeks back when they were in LA for Juggalo Weekend, and. One of them was for No Jumper, and the other was for uh, Cypress Hill, uh, Be Real from Cypress Hill's uh, show, The Smoke Box. Um, the first drop of footage from the No Jumper interview came out, and it seemed to be, you know, just a, a clickbaity type thing where it's almost like ICP Theater. They're watching music videos and commenting on them. It's very much like ICP Theater, actually. Um, so check that out. That was pretty funny. Um, Seems like uh, Jay's getting on Shaggy's nerves a little bit, huh? From that video, what's going on with that? Uh, Shaggy seemed a little, little, little salty at times. I love, I love both of those guys, but God, uh, seems like, seems like Jay was getting on Shaggy's nerves a little bit. So, some, some, some weird there. I don't know. I picked up on some weird vibes there. Um, but uh, the other one was the smoke box interview, which I literally just finished watching slash listening to, um, a little while ago. Um. That was interesting. Uh, Violent J kind of telling some of the same stories that you've heard a bunch of times if you've seen a bunch of ICP interviews or read um, Violent J's book, Behind the Paint. Um, but if you haven't heard or uh, read any of these stories before, they're really interesting stories. They talk about their... Uh, Violent J talks about their um, early history of, you know, um, promoting uh, old school um, printing flyers. You know, that's something they talk about a lot is the old school hustle they used to do. Um, yeah, it was it was a good good interview. Um, I think Jay got a little too stoned because he definitely did the thing where he's like, "What were we talking about? What were we talking about? What were we talking about?" Like a couple of times. So. But it was still a very interesting interview. I always enjoy an ICP interview. There's straight up some of the best subjects to see interviewed. But then again, I'm biased. Big fucking ICP fan. Um, let's see. So the ICP, that five show gimmick thing that they're doing, is that even going to happen? I mean, they were going to announce something with that, but god damn, that really threw... They, they announced that the week that... <laughs> the week before coronavirus shit hit the fan, so... That's a really interesting concept. I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna talk a lot about it right now. I have some thoughts on that. I want to kind of wait and see if they announce anything. But basically, ICP. Uh, r long story short, ICP announced that they are going to be doing five shows over the next two years. I think it was. And if you go to all five shows, each show you get a coin, right? A coin, a physical metal coin, and. Each show you get the coin, and after you go to all five shows and you get all five coins, you get to turn in the coins to get a special Juggalo ID card. That's right. <laughs> uh, it's that now. This is the shit that I love ICP for. No one does cool shit like this. It sounds corny, I'm sure, to some of you folks, but I love the idea. I wonder if it's even going to happen at this point, though, because boy, it's bad timing. Oh, okay, here we go. The ICP beer. So they put the ICP beer whoop dub online for sale. Should I buy it and do a little like taste test for you guys? Because low key, I'm very, I haven't seen anyone talk about what this shit tastes like or like anything. Like, so sh should I, should I buy this shit? Should I give it a try on a stream? Should I? make a video where I try it. I'm low-key thinking of buying one of each and just straight up like doing a taste test video for you guys. So let me know. Maybe I'll collab with Snack Gods. Hey, Snack Gods, you watching? Hit me up. Um, All right, I think that's it for the Juggalo shit that I wanted to talk about. 
Um, oh boy, I had, I took a bunch of notes on Friday the 13th, part eight. Hold on, let me look at these. All right, let me just go. I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about Friday the 13th, part eight, which I watched this week as a part of my continuing Friday the 13th marathon that I've been doing in conjunction with in, in Voorhees We Trust, the podcast with Gorley and Rust. Um, shouts out to Paul Rust and uh, uh, Matt Gorley. Um, very much enjoy your podcast, gentlemen. Uh, but yeah, I think I took a lot of random notes here. So I just I, I think I'm just going to like rapid fire these. So if you've seen Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, you might know some of these weird things that I just mentioned. Um, let's see how this goes. I'm going to fucking just, I'm just going to fucking rapid fire these. All right. So in the opening of the movie, there's a dude squirting heroin very recklessly. That's funny. Uh, Stephen King's pen is magic. She stabs Jason. She gets Stephen King's pen early in the movie, and then she stabs Jason in the eye with it later, and it seems to ward off the weird hallucination that's going on. There's a hell of a lot of teleport Jason. Once again, shout out, shout out to M. Voorhees we trust. Paul Russ came up with the phrase teleport Jason for when Jason Voorhees seems to be in one spot and teleports to another. That's called teleport Jason. Um, I love that phrase, and he does it a lot in this movie. Jason is very slimy. Why is he so slimy? I know he was, uh, he was under the sea for a, for a while there. But why is he walking around? St I mean, it, I guess it's just he's spending so much time in water and his body is rotting, but he is hilariously slimy everywhere he goes. I was laughing at that. I enjoyed that very much. Um, in this movie, a lot of people try to physically fight Jason. I noticed that. Um, specifically, the uh, the boxer fella on top of the, the building um, once they're in New York. There's a whole extended boxing sequence with Jason where, spoiler alert, at the end, homie's like, take your best shot, and Jason just knocks his melon off his fucking head. That's dope. Um, yeah, that's dope to me that people tried to fight him. Oh, cu cutting back to the uh, the beginning of the movie, there's also this gross kind of dope shot of a rat like going into like a toxic waste barrel or something. But then later in the movie, when Jason's killing the uh, shitty uncle teacher character guy, the old man guy, when he's dunking them in there, there's that that rat's in there dead. I don't know if anyone has ever picked up on that. I've never noticed that, but I thought that was dope. There's also um, a callback to the squirting heroin dude, which I think is the people who are trying to rape um, the final girl um, in this movie. Uh, uh, there, there, there's these uh, gang characters who come and try to rape her when they're in New York at one point, and they drug her with some substance in a syringe that they very, once again, just carelessly squirt into the air. I, I, I don't know. I find that hilarious. But then they also just straight up, st I thought they were going to like, she was going to be saved. Nope. They just stick the needle in the, in the girl's arm. And yeah, I thought that was wild. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, way too much saxophone in this movie. Yeah. Chill with the sax. What's going on? I hate the saxophone, by the way. If you know me, that's a, that's a thing. Um, this movie should have been called uh, uh, Jason at Sea. Or they should have done a movie because uh, he spends the whole they spend the whole movie on the boat. They should have just called this movie Jason at Sea or Jason takes the sea or Jason takes a voyage on the sea. Something like that. That would have been a way funner movie. And then you know what you do? You have the boat sink like they did the next movie. Jason's Island. Come on. Come on. Give me my props. Jason's Island. They're stranded on a desert island. Jason's killing you. Come on, come on, two-parter. Come on, Hollywood. I'm I'm just sitting here with these ideas. What are you doing? Come on, hire me, pay me. I'm. I guess maybe Hollywood might be shut down right now. But anyway, um, there's a lot of like flashbacks to little kid Jason in this movie. Uh, he. Why does he keep getting more and less deformed during these flashbacks? I found I found that really strange, and I couldn't figure out a reason why. That was happening may, narratively or uh, any, anyway. I thought that was strange. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. That So this note says Jason on the train falling over slash no cell. I had to think about what the hell I was talking about there. So there's a part towards the end where the train hits the brakes 
uh, no, the guy pulls the the, uh, the 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 emergency stop thing on the subway train, and Jason just goes flying backwards like he's never been on a subway before, which is hilarious because he hasn't been. I love that part. I I I want more stuff where Jason just doesn't understand how something works because let's be honest, he's slow. He grew up in the woods, basically, because he died in the lake, right? But then there's like 20 years where homeboy's just living in the woods like a fucking hick eating berries and twigs and shit. So, uh, pause. (laughs) Where was I? Oh, there's those weird punk dudes that are in the beginning of the movie that also show up again later in the movie. But they're clearly punk rock dudes, but they're bumping like old school hip hop. And like Jason just comes and like breaks the boom box. Feels very like... 80s New York anti hip hop slash boombox culture shit going on there. Thought that was weird and didn't really age well. Um, and kind of confusing because they're clearly like punk rock kids. Shout out to my punk rock homies though. I I, I fuck with y'all. Um, uh, there's the okay. There's a the most baffling thing in the movie is towards the end, the sewer worker guy who says. Toxic waste overflows the sewers every night at midnight. Is that some? Is that is that something that happens in New York? Is that does that uh is that that happens every night, huh? Wow, that's that's interesting. Um, the ending sucks. I I didn't like the ending. Um, he just drowns in toxic waste and then for some reason turns into young Jason again, and then they just cut and they're walking on the street. Oh, I assume they just climbed out of the sewer and they were just walking on the street again. Shitty ending. Really didn't like that. Um, One last note. I found this funny as I was watching the credits. The character of Tony um, in the credits is played by someone just called Ace. Don't know who Ace is. I really don't even know who Tony is, to be honest with you, but I assume Ace... One name. That was a huge star, right? Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, we're there's not a lot to talk about this week. We're getting we're already kind of wrapping up. Um, let's see. What else can we talk? So I had I had uh reached out um last week for some topics of discussion um on Facebook and just to see if any of my uh my followers or friends or whatever you guys are to me, um if they had any subjects they wanted me to talk about or questions or anything, I got a few responses that I was not able to talk about last week. So I just want to real quick go through them and give credit where it is due. And then we'll wrap this up. Um, not a very long episode. I think we're going to come in at about a half hour, but blah, 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 blah. Why am I talking about the time of the episode? Let's keep it going. So first of all, I had, uh, from the truth, the truth requested that I talk about nightmare on Elm street. Um, I love Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorite horror movie series. As a kid, I loved Freddy. I don't know what it was. I just fucking loved Freddy. I thought he was funny. I liked his inventive kills. Um, I love the glove. One of my, uh, I talk about this on, uh, San- my song Santa Claus quite a bit. Um, that song is inspired by A Christmas Morning where I got one of my favorite presents of all time. Um, My parents had somehow tracked down, uh, I believe it was a bootleg uh, plastic glove replica of like Freddy's glove, like for a toy for a child, which is hilarious that they were making toys for children that are like murder weapons. But I I got that that morning and it it was the same year that I woke up in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve And I caught my dad putting presents out. But I just saw a shadow and it scared the shit out of me because I'm like, oh, my God. Because like my parents would always tell me, like, if you catch Santa, he might just leave and you don't get any presents. Nice job, parents. Um, uh, So I just was scared shitless. And I just ran back to bed and act act like, oh, shit, I hope he didn't see me. I want to get that. I want to I hope I get a bike this year. Oh, my God. Um, So. I just remember that was the same year because I remember waking up and telling my parents like, oh, I saw Santa Claus. Oh, and they're like, oh, yeah, sure you did, Eric. Uh, 
Uh, but anyway, um, I got the, the Freddy glove that year. That was dope. Um, yeah, I just thought my whole life I've loved, uh, horror movies. I've been watching horror movies since I was a very young age and Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy Krueger have always been a huge part of that. Um, Mavstar requested that I talk about plastic surgery. I know Mavstar was probably trolling with me on that, but I do have opinions on plastic surgery, so I will share them. I don't like plastic surgery. Um, unless, like, your face was ripped off by a baboon, or you were severely mauled by a tiger. Um, shouts out to my Tiger King heads out there. I don't think plastic surgery is a necessity. I think a lot of people ruin their body and face in their natural beauty and natural aging beauty by doing plastic surgery. Um, yeah, don't fuck with your beauty. I think you're perfectly fine the way you are, you are unless your face was ripped off by a baboon. Um, yeah, real quick thoughts on plastic surgery. There you go, Mavstar. Um, let's see. Doc C, being cheeky as he is, asked me to talk about Mozart, James Joyce, and sodomy. <laughs> Okay, let's hit these one by one. Uh, Mozart. I like Mozart. Uh, big fan of Mozart from watching Amadeus as a kid. Amadeus? 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 Uh, as a kid. And uh, just fell in love with his eccentric behavior. I feel like I relate to Mozart quite a bit because he was he seemed so eccentric in that movie. And even as a kid, I, I looked up to that and weirdly related to that. I like eccentric behavior. I like weird behavior. And he, he was also a pervert, which I really appreciate as well. Um, James Joyce, I feel to be sort of overhyped, unreadable trash. <laughs> and sodomy, legalize it. Um, let's see. Doxy also asked me how to rap. This is from this week. He asked me how to rap with a mask on. Um, that's a good question. I know he's he means like a surgical mask because of the stuff that's going on right now and all you fools who are not sick going out into the world uh, wearing these masks. How do you rap with a mask on? Now, if you're a horrorcore act, you should be smart enough to have a liberal mouth hole. Pause. Um, that you can stuff that microphone into or next to and get decent sound from. Uh, a lot of horrorcore rappers do wear masks. Um, Alazul Alu has a relatively big mouth hole, and I haven't seen them live, but they're, from the videos I've seen, they get decent live sound. Um, so I assume that has something to do with it. I've never personally rapped with a mask on. Um, with the, uh, the medical mask, though, that's a good question. Because... The other way to do it with you're a horrorcore rapper is I've heard that some will just like I think even Corey Taylor maybe talked about the so I think even a metal band not not Corey but some metal band who wore masks talked about how they just kind of put the mic under the mask and get to get to get the sound that way. Uh that's not going to work with the 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 medical mask. Uh you're kind of compromising yourself or others if you're wearing them properly if you're doing that so i guess wrapping with a medical mask on you're just gonna sound weird and muffly and yeah maybe just don't ma wrap with the mask on uh would be my advice all right <laughs> so and i had one more from raw def and that's gonna carry us out this week i think so Raw Def asked me to talk about Bigfoot, and that's going to, I'm going to lead that into my conspiracy of the week this week. Um, Bigfoot and the forestry, for the, the ugh, Bigfoot and the forest industry, I guess is what I should say. Uh, that is a, so that, that, the basic idea of that conspiracy theory is that Sasquatch and or Bigfoot, whatever you want to call it, it's the same thing. Uh, their being, their existence is being suppressed by the forest industry, um, or the paper industry, or the wood industry, whatever you want to call it, uh, because those, the idea is those, those, uh, those workers are the ones to see the Sasquatch, the Bigfoot, and if they report them, 
and they get tagged as an endangered species, which they likely are if they do exist. They likely are some sort of endangered species. Um, they're going to not be able to work in those areas anymore. And that's why they don't report this stuff. And the United States government maybe wants to keep the, the fact that there's a North American ape quiet. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the conspiracy of the week. That's a really short one, but yeah, that's that, that, that is when people ask me like, why, 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 why don't we know that exists? That's one of the things I like to point out, um, that the forest industry does have an interest in not being, not working in an area where endangered animals are. Um, so yeah, I just want to talk about that and just to expand on, and I'll talk briefly um, I'll say, yes, I do believe in the existence of a North American ape or Sasquatch or Bigfoot or whatever. I do indeed, this, I do and believe in that conspiracy. I do think the forest industry, um, doesn't want them to be marked as an endangered species, um, or lose that sweet wood money, baby. Um, so yeah, that, that, that is one I believe in. And I'll tell you why, another reason why I do believe in the Sasquatch or Bigfoot uh, and it's simply the classic Patterson Gimlin film. Um, the one that you've seen, I'm sure a million times on TV where the Bigfoot is walking and it turns around and looks at the camera. You know what I'm talking about? You can YouTube, but just put in Patterson Gimlin footage. Now, as a kid, I saw that a million times and it was only listening to a podcast a few years ago that a Bigfoot expert pointed out that if you look really close at that damn thing, that's a female Bigfoot. It has breastuses. I never noticed that shit. Um, I don't know if it was just because it was bad definition, but if you look at the newer, like the best scans they have with the corrected shaky image stuff, that thing definitely has tits. Now, there's been a lot of people who've studied the film and there's there's lots of reasons that they they think that the the proportions on this being just doesn't make sense like it's 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 a certain height based off of um the trees around it it's a uh, it's it's arms are moving in a certain way that humans don't walk like it would have to have studied like a certain walk pattern to walk this way there's all these other things i can point to um but i just focus on the breastuses. Now, if you want to say that that's a costume or a suit, who the fuck in the 60s was making a suit, a gorilla suit with tits on it? That's a very strange thing. To, and if you're going to hoax a Bigfoot, who the fuck thinks to do that? I don't know. That's just the way I look at it. Um, let's see. Where are we at here? A little bit over a half hour. Um, yeah, I think we're going to wrap this up. That's been uh, the Humble Among show for this week. Uh, not a lot going on, but I, I'm sure I'll, I'll have some more for you. I think next week I might debut a new segment. Um, I don't know what to call it. Uh, it's going to be a musical segment where I play you a song that I found on the internet. And... Is that song good? Is it bad? Is it so bad that it's amazing? You'll have to wait and find out. I'm still trying to think of a good segment title for this. Um, uh, if you if you have an idea for a good, a good segment title, uh, send it my way. I'll give you full credit for it and uh, send you a sticker. Speaking of which, Humble Among Stickers are in. I keep forgetting to show these things off. I'll show them to the camera real quick. Check these out. Humble Among Stickers. Speaking of Bigfoot. You can't really see him there, but there's a little Bigfoot guy there. Whatever. Check these suckers out. Any merch order, you get several of these. Anyway, humbleamong.bandcamp.com. All merch. Uh, check out The Wind on all streaming services. Um, check out Bleed featuring Ouija Mac on all streaming services. More music projects coming soon. Another episode next week. If you have any questions or comments or things you would like to hear me speak on or give my opinion on, leave them in the comments. 
email me humble among at gmail um whatever just let me know what you would like to hear me talk about and yeah have a great one i will see you next week peace